Welcome to Water Wizards, where we get inspired by the movers and shakers of the world, those catalyzing change just like water. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Water Wisdom Podcast. This is going to be a really magical podcast. This is the lovely Nadia, my daughter. She's 12 years old. And what we're going to bring to you today is some information about kind of our evolution as a family. So as we are navigating these dynamics, the changes in the world and feeling this dissonance and friction coming up between what we're experiencing at home and then what we're experiencing in the workplace or maybe at school, how do we navigate that? And really the simplest way to put it before we go into detail is presence. You know, I definitely feel more equipped than I did in the beginning to help my kids navigate what's going on in the world. But really, they help me navigate what's going on in the world, too. It's definitely a co-creation, a back and forth. But it's really about presence, being fully present with one another. And when you don't know what to do in what seems to be a big situation, you get to breathe into it, observe you know, the behavior, what is going on around you, and just be fully present with one another. And so, Nadia, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hi. Hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> so grab your water, everyone. Grab your water. Oh. <laughs> you too. And as always, there are codes transmitted in every single podcast here. So we are placing the intention within our vessel of water to amplify all of the perfect codes that are coming through for us at this time that serve us on the highest and greatest. So cheers to us, Nadia. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Okay, so shall we dive in? And I'm seeing all of the lovely comments. Thank you so much for engaging. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you really ready? Yes. Ready as you'll ever be? Yes. Okay, so let's start with, I'm going to ask you a question that you didn't know I was going to ask you. What? Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? And I want to invite you to speak a, kind of loud like I do. Um, but will you tell us a little bit about what you like to do, what grade you're in, just a little bit about who is Nadia? Tell us about Nadia. I'm in seventh grade. I do online school. I ride horses and I play hockey. Um, what else? What do you like to do at home? Um, what are you doing now? You're reading a book. Oh, yeah. Do you I'm like reading do the you Hunger like Games? The Hunger Games? Yeah. We like dystopian fiction here. <laughs> <laughs> the irony is thick. <laughs> um, do you like reading? Mm -hmm. This is kind of new for you, though. Yeah, I used to hate reading. <laughs> She used to hate reading. Okay, so what else? What else about, like, what's your favorite thing to do? Um, ride horses. Ride horses? Yeah. Uh, isn't that beautiful? So we know that horses are used a lot in therapy because their heart field is just huge. How do you feel when you're with the horses? Good. Good. Is it therapeutic for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, something I've noticed about Nadia is when she doesn't ride, at least once a week, she gets a little snippy. So horse therapy is real, right? Engaging with animals is an amazing way to heal and stay centered and stay grounded and really fully engage with the world around you and enjoy the deliciousness of the physical world, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is there anything else that you want to share? Um, I don't think so. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's dive in. So if it's okay with you, mm -hmm. I would like to talk about, I'm going to go back about six years and talk about kind of how we were as a family when we were dipping into our evolution, but then even a little bit before that when it was pretty chaotic mm -hmm. and then talk about um, a couple of instances that helped move us forward and how we dealt with life in a different way. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to be telling you some details and then I'm going to ask Nadia about her feelings at that time, how she felt in that situation, in that environment. And, you know, 
one of the most amazing things we can do for our kids is really ask them, how are you feeling in this moment right now? Opening the space to just hold it for them because kids are really good at navigating if we fully witness what they're experiencing in the moment. And so we're going to go back about six years. I would say that my awakening journey started about six years ago. We're going to back up even before that, before I was kind of hit between the eyes with what needed to shift in this like massive knowing that something had to shift or we were all going to explode. <laughs> um, so let's go back, Nadia. I want to talk about me as a parent before I was really a conscious parent. I was, you know, the typical, and it's not a judgment, the typical kind of 3D parent that is not really present with the kids. I was always very busy. I was working as a nurse. I was navigating a marriage that was very difficult that I fully claim responsibility in as well. Three kids uh, really just getting through the day. And so can you kind of take yourself back to that time? And can you tell us, do you remember how you felt at that time? Yeah. Okay. Speak louder. <laughs> Um, well, and you can be fully transparent. <laughs> well, you definitely did not. You got angry faster. Yeah. Okay. But you also, when I, I would also feel bad though, because you also did go to work because you were a nurse. So you were at work for a really long time and then you would get home. And then you just, obviously, since you've been at work all day and dealing with everything, it was just, not very good. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I would get mad more easily. Mm -hmm. So I was snappy. Yeah. Now let's be clear. I never beat anyone, <laughs> but I really, I was very snappy. I was an angry little woman, wasn't I? And when I would come home, did you feel me present with you? Not really. I was just busy. Wasn't yeah. I? I would come home and then I would start doing the things, you know, I would like, set the kids up in a way to do whatever I could set them up with to distract them. And then I would do what I needed to do, mm -hmm. uh, make dinner, which I was usually kind of bitter about because I'd worked a 12 or 13 hour shift and would come home and have to make dinner. And so you think about the frequency that you're infusing into the food. I mean, there's so much to be said about making a loving meal for your family and actually being in the presence of that frequency of food and drink and infusing your heart into that. I was disconnected, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. um, so I was married still to her dad. And there was, there was a whole nother level of friction involved in that interaction. And so what about your feelings around our interactions? What did what did you see from us? Do you remember? Kind of. Just not fully there almost. And also I feel like I was angry too when I was younger. So it wasn't very good. Oh, okay. So yeah. And you you were angry sometimes. <laughs> you would yeah. get angry easy, more easily and I would get angry more easily as well. Mm -hmm. So you think about, you know, as parents, we really hold the space. We create the space for our children, right? Like the queen of the castle. And that's how we were operating is it, it was less of a co-creation and more of a dominion, right? I mean, I was not, I would not say I was ruling with an iron fist or yeah. anything like that, but it was, you will do as I say, and there will be no explanation. You'll just do it because I'm really too tired to explain it to you. And so just go with it, please. And if you don't, then I'm going to get mad. And I'm going to raise my voice and everyone's going to be uncomfortable. Then everyone's going to start butting heads. So, and this is still how most typical households are operating today, right? Now, so we have definitely had multiple quantum leaps through this experience because here we are six years later and our world is completely different. Do you agree with that, Nadia? Yes. That it's completely different? Okay. So now we're going to jump forward a little bit to your first homeschooling experience and how that came about. Now, this was, this was right about, was this the, about the six year mark five years ago or was this five years ago? Yeah, I think so. Okay. About five years ago. So we're going to, so I had started to dip into a little bit of mindset work 
the blinders are starting to come off, but I was still quite entrenched in the traditional way of being. We were going to church every weekend. It was a big to do, but it was definitely, you know, showing up for self once a week, but then really showing up for the crowd, you know, and showing up in a way to like try and shed the guilt of not being this good Christian throughout the week and, you know, not reaching to or connecting with a higher power throughout the week, but going for that one hour and getting it all in. So it, and it was a big to do in the mornings, you know, it'd be like, nobody wanted to go to church, but damn it, we were going to church because mom said so. So we would corral everyone and everyone was not super happy about it. And we rush out the door and walk in late, but damn it, we showed up, you know, going through the motions. It did, I started to feel a lot of dissonance in my, you know, cognitive dissonance, physical, uh, just physical pain. My body was screaming at me like something is not right here. Something has to change. And started to dip into the mindset work, a little bit of meditation here and there, but still the mind was very, very busy. The world was very, very busy. And then Nadia started showing up for me in a way that she was really screaming to, like literally and figuratively <laughs> was screaming that something needed to change. She was going to a Catholic school, first grade. What grade were you in? I think it was. I went kindergarten in first grade. Okay. So you were in first grade and she had some big blow ups at school. She was like, I don't want to do this. And so I am not going to do this. And it was a big to do. The principal had to get involved and, you know, little sweet girl here. So clearly she was the path of least resistance for us to make change. Right. And that's kind of an ironic statement, but it's true because so many of us, when our kids speak, we listen. Uh, children are a huge catalyst to change for parents. And I can tell you right now, my rapid evolution has everything to do with the kids really holding my feet to the fire, which I really appreciate. Thank you. So big blow up at school and she did not want to go to school. She would get up in the morning and she did not want to go to school. So at this time I had Sophia was in school as well. And so was she. James was still at home with me. And I was like, so I have to look at something else because I cannot subject her to going to school like this every day. And so now I want to turn to you and ask you about your feelings. Do you remember how it felt for you either in school or having to get up to go school? What did it feel like for you? Do you remember? Um, Kind of. It just was very, I felt like stuck. Like I couldn't do anything else. And I felt like it was just a cycle. Like kept just waking up and doing the same thing and then would go back home and then you would get back from work. And then I just felt like everything just kept repeating itself. <laughs> that? Isn't that so true? It's like we operate in rote. Yeah. You know, we were just going through the motions. Okay. What about, do you remember at all how it felt in your body? Because you were an anxious little kid moving through this. Mm -hmm. Do you remember at all how that felt in your body? Mm. Did you feel like you wanted to jump out of your skin? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And so these were the reasons why you were acting out. Do you remember that time when you were in church? And you were just not having it. I don't remember it. You don't remember no. it? Like the print, like the teacher had to like carry you out. I don't. You don't remember it. I hear stories, but yeah, you know, okay, don't. Okay, that's okay. It. That's okay. Okay. So that was the big kick in the shin. Something has to change. And oh, I was too busy to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with it. It felt so big, and there was so much fear around. What are we going to do? Because co-parent. Her father is very, very mainstream and very traditional, and he actually has some huge blocks around homeschooling. He grew up, without going too deep into it, he was in, in uh, the Baptist religion, and he saw a lot of people who were moving through homeschooling, but you know, there's a whole nother program on top of that. And so he based his entire belief system about homeschooling on that experience as a kid, right? Like programmed. So 
I knew this was going to be uh, a tense, an interesting situation to navigate. And I was absolutely not as grounded or present as I am now. So it, it was, it was extra, extra difficult. So what ended up happening is Nadia started going to what's called a magnet school. And it was a school, I don't remember the type of um, education that it was based on. It's right there at the edge of my awareness. Anyway, it's alternative schooling where you, it's more active based as opposed to passive, right? Pass, like receive the information, memorize it and regurgitate it. There's a lot of movement and being outside and it's a specific school of thought, right? Anyway, we started to explore this, but it was a new school. They were actually transitioning a pretty rough public school into this magnet school. It was the first year, but we thought, okay, let's give it a go. And this is where Nadia started going to school. And at first it was quite a lovely experience. Do you remember your experience in that school? Mm, kind of. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. So let's just talk about some simple, like some loud shifts from traditional school to this type of school. Do you remember the difference in style of learning? Yeah. Yes. Like I remember they didn't make us do a bunch of those like times tests. Okay. But... There was no rocket math. Yeah. Okay. Which I hated that. Okay. So that definitely the edge. Why did you hate that? Why did you hate rocket math? It was very stressful. Okay. It stressed you out. Why did it stress you out? Because he had like a little ticking timer. I didn't <laughs> know there was a ticking timer. I know. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's it's terrible. Bad. So what would they do? They'd set the timer. And then you just had a big sheet of multiplication facts and you had to like get as many done as you could in the time. And it was very stressful. Mm. Do you remember how that felt in your body? Bad. <laughs> It did not feel good, did it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So now going to this new school that it was a pretty rough crowd, but do you remember the teacher? Yes. Did you like the teacher? Yes, I did. Did you feel the difference between her energy and the energy of the teacher that you experienced at the other school? Yes. What What was different for you? It was way better. She Okay. Better. So what do you mean by that? Mm. She was a lot nicer. Okay. She was nicer. How did you feel in her presence compared to the other t teacher? Like I didn't have as much anxiety whenever I was around her and she just explained things way better. The old teachers would like do this. So it's like. Do you feel like she listened to you more? Yes. Yeah. She was more present with you? Yeah. So you felt safer mm -hmm. with her. Okay. So. I want to talk a little bit about the transition for, for her father in this and navigating that. He really was in a space where it felt almost too big. I, I don't want to speak for him. This is what I, this is my perception of how he navigated it. Kind of tune out, you know, like let mom take care of it. I'm not happy about this, but we'll try it. Uh, there was a lot of advocating that I was doing, and I was very afraid to advocate, not because it, anything physical was going to happen, but because I knew it was going to stir the pot. I knew it was going to be difficult. It was going to take more time and energy and focus in order to help this shift occur and more space and attention and awareness with her. So what ended up happening is Sophia, my oldest, decided that she wanted to go to school with Nadia too. She came out of the Catholic school and started going to this school too. Sixth grade? Yeah. Sixth grade. Now, remember, this was a transition school. It was still a rough crowd. It was too rough. Like, the teacher was great. The experience educationally for Sophia was great because it was very hands-on. It was very like an, a way of applying the education as opposed to passively receiving. But... It was too rough. So my point is, Sophia started homeschooling. That truly, I feel, was one of the straws that broke the camel's back and led to the divorce because the homeschooling thing was a big, big point of contention for their dad. 
And so how did I move through that? I did it with as much love and grace as I could, which there's more love and grace here now than there was then. But I, I was fully present for the journey as an advocate for my children, really at all costs. At all costs. And so Nadia is going to school. Sophia is homeschooling. This is when things got pretty big and messy. I was still a nurse working at the hospital. And there were some big blowups in the family, especially while I was gone, that there were some unsafe situations created. And we won't go too deep into that. But do you kind of remember that where the friction got really, really heavy before it was finally like, okay, this is not going to work. This ha Something has to change. Do you remember that? Yeah. Do you feel okay to share a little bit about that? Because there yeah. are a lot of kids – that are in this experience right now, you mm -hmm. know? And so what you have to offer will absolutely support yeah. children and their parents in some way. Mm -hmm. um, well. Was it scary for you? Almost. I I don't know. I feel like also I was kind of young. So I feel like Sophia would speak better on that yeah but I do kind of remember it was just it just feels it felt like it made things it feels like almost the safe place wasn't safe anymore like you know okay so let me ask you this question the difference in the feeling of us being married together in the chaos compared to after that. And so we could even go to now. Do you feel like the vast ocean between then and now? Yeah. Was it worth it to go through everything that has happened through the process of the divorce to be where we are now? Yes. Yes. You don't wish we would have stayed together for the sake of you. Right. Which is, again, ironic because and I ask this question because there are so many families who especially, you know, in the past, you know, I look at my grandparents and they stayed together for, for the children, but it didn't serve the children. It would have been better if they would have split sooner so that the kids would have been in a safe space to feel safe in their body. Right because we carry all of these things forward. Um, thank you for sharing that. Okay. So now you homeschool now, right? Mm -hmm. So let's fast forward a little bit and talk about that transition. So what happened is Nadia uh, home, let's see, you were at that magnet school for a while. Did you go to no, one, I you, went one year. One year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was first grade. Second. That was second grade. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm glad you know the timeline. Okay. <laughs> Young brains. Okay. <laughs> so then we moved. When your dad moved out, we kind of followed him to to Fishers to be close to him, right? Mm -hmm. And that school system. And you went there until COVID hit, right? Yes. And that was Sophia um running by. You're welcome to join us. <laughs> So then Nadia started going to school at the elementary school in a new area that we moved to for until COVID. Mm -hmm. And then COVID just blew everything wide open, right? At some point, everyone was online schooling through the school system because that the whole world was. <laughs> then kids were invited back, but they had to wear masks. And we said no to that. So we stayed at home. Then when it came down to it, it was time to check it out, go back. We had kind of, you know, rode that wave as long as we could until her dad was kind of like, okay, what are we doing here? And then I was like, oh, got to have that conversation again. And Sophia had continued to homeschool. Nadia tried to go back in what grade? Fourth? No, fifth. Mm -mm. Yeah, fifth. So she 
was not having it. Okay. So now, now the, the remembering that you have will probably be a little richer. Yeah. Tell us after schooling online for that amount of time, which you really did enjoy, Mm -hmm. you did very well with that. Your dad said, just make her go back for, you know, a couple, try it for at least a couple of weeks with resistance. I said yes and wanted to honor that. And she was agreeable to it. So tell us about that experience, Nadia. It was not good. Talk louder. (laughs) It was what? It was not good. What do you mean? The teachers, they just, they were like, really, they got like even mean. Every, but every teacher there, it's a good school, but they all were like, and then like one of the teachers like made us like walk up and down the hallways back and forth because a day that I wasn't there, they were slightly talking at one point. I don't know. They were just, and also I didn't like the kids very much either. Okay. So, so let's talk about the teachers a little bit. The teaching style was, what was the teaching style like? Typical. Yeah. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, like specifically, I sit at a desk and. They just, they made us do the rocket math again. Oh no, the rocket math <laughs> yeah. is back. Yeah. Oh, oh man, I bet you felt that in your nervous system. <laughs> like yeah. flashbacks. Yeah. Okay. And so did you change classes? Yeah, we changed classes once. Once throughout the day, mm-hmm. but the learning was very passive, right? Meaning that they're throwing information at you yeah, and you're just taking it. And were you taking notes? No, they no. just kind of gave us the information and then expected us to remember it. Was there any conversation about any dialogue back and forth engagement about the information not, that they're giving you? Not really. Now you just receive it, it and just regurgitate it. Okay. Yeah. Now, something I want to bring up. Tell me about, you said you didn't really like the other kids, but what do you mean by that? Um, they just were very immature. Immature? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. They were just kind of crazy. Could you have a deep conversation with one of your friends? No. No? And you were kind of used to having some deep conversations at home, right? Mm-hmm. So do you feel like your frequency was off? Yeah. Okay. Now, you weren't there very long. <laughs> How did it go? You went for what? Three days? Two days? It was three days. It was three days? Yeah. And did, didn't you cry every day when, when you came yeah. home? You'd get off the bus and you would cry? Yeah. Why? Because it was sad. It was sad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Did you feel stuck? Yes. I was like, how do people do this every single day? Mm -hmm. It's just like, like I was saying, like a cycle. Yeah. And now I'm curious, did you know that I was going to hold the line for you or were you not sure about that? I've never really asked you this question. I mean, I was pretty sure. You were pretty sure? Yeah. Okay. So on day three, Nadia came home and I mean, didn't you basically refuse to go back the next day? You're like, I'm not going back. So you were really advocating for yourself. That's pretty strong. Like that's very strong, you know, and your dad was of the mindset, make her go. Yeah. I remember him saying, no one likes school. You just have to do it. This is not the time that we're living in anymore, right? Our kids are too emotionally, energetically evolved to just roll with the tide. And so we're seeing a lot of neurodivergence is what they're labeling it, right? We're seeing kids who seem a little off. Well, they're not off. They're really freaking on, but they can't, right? They can't integrate. They have so much awareness turned on that they can't integrate it into this world because guess what? We're the ones who are off, right? But our kids can help plug us in. And so we decided, okay, now I have to have the conversation. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Are you going to join us? Yeah. Okay, everyone, this is Sophia. I'm so happy that you're here to join us. Do you want to grab um, a seat or you can stand? I'll stand. Okay. All right. So this is Sophia. I swear she- I don't normally look like this. You look beautiful, Sophia, always, even in your Christmas blanket. 
Did you see Nadia? She said she does. Oh, well, you're Thank gorgeous you. always. Okay. So this is Sophia. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Sophia. Tell us your age. Oh, I'm 16. And what's your favorite thing to do? You really have to sing. She's a triple threat. She can act, sing, and dance. We're working on the dancing part. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. So do you want to, you came because you want to chime in, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to chime in, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you don't have to. Have uh, to. You must. It's like, I have to go to school. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, where was I? Oh, we were talking about Nadia's experience coming into, back into the, well, yeah, back into kind of this homeschooling mm -hmm. arena. And do you remember the day that she came home? And she was like, I'm, yes, because you was, had a conversation with her. I did. I was the one who talked to her. And yes. She like cried in my <clears throat> arms. And she like Nadia doesn't cry. I mean, she does, but like you don't see it. <laughs> so it was kind of I was like and me and Nadia are really close. We've gotten closer these past couple <laughs> you know, months. But like she doesn't cry. So it was a very big. Oh, my God, something needs to change. And I went to mom. I don't remember how I brought that up with you, but I was like, dude, like Nadia's really hurting. And she, I mean, she's not being dramatic about this. Like you could tell it was really, really affecting her negatively. Yeah. And so imagine, and, and many of us growing up in the school system, I hated school. There was a time in fifth grade where I faked illness and my dad, I like stayed home for two weeks. My dad took me to the doctor. I ended up on medication because I didn't want to go to school that bad. And so we store all of this in our body, right? And and I did have the awareness at that time because I was doing uh, the healing work and really diving deep with myself. Mm. And so, you know, I was thinking of the imprint. What imprint am I willing to allow my child to carry with her and to have to shed, you know, at 42 right. and go through all of that? So I knew I had to put my big girl panties on and had to move straight into this. And it wasn't, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Mm -hmm. However, I also had the awareness that if I expected it to not be easy, it was not going to be easy. Right. So I did a lot of meditating and a lot of breathing and a lot of different practices to help navigate that. And, and I told Nadia, I said, okay, I said, let, let me just give me a day, give me a day mm -hmm. to get centered. We'll call you in and then I'll address this with your dad. And so I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I'm going to talk about her um, homeschooling experience too, since she's here with us. Um, it was a big blow up. Mm -hmm. it, it could have been bigger, but it was a big blow up, wasn't it? Wasn't there two separate blow ups? Two, well, I guess, did she homeschool two separate times? Um, or was there just two separate blow ups? There was two separate blow ups. Um, so we're just going to squish that into one and kind of talk about it energetically. Nadia. Hmm. So it's really is like, and still to an extent, not, it's not, I don't think it's as extreme as it used to be, but you all are living in two different worlds, right? Like you've got mom's world and you've got dad's world. And there are a lot of kids living like this. The gap is bigger for us because we are so present with each other in this space and energetically aware. But so I want to ask you if you remember, Nadia, how did it feel for you to have the extreme of you have one parent who is all in advocating for you. I want to do what is feels true and good and right to you and acknowledge you as an individual human being. I don't want to rule over you and to have the kind of the opposite. Do you remember that? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about <laughs> that? Um, yeah, it definitely has gotten better, though. Okay, good. Sure. That's beautiful. We're ride that wave. Do you remember how it felt in your body? Yes, it felt again like you're just stuck. Mm -hmm. The feeling of stuckedness. <laughs> Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. I don't think so. We Do just you made remember it a word. the actual blow up. We're at the library. Not at the library. We were. We were. Mm -hmm. And we were getting like blown up texts. <laughs> So um, without going too deep into the detail, there were th um, abandonment threats made in many ways from many different angles. It was a power play. Mm -hmm. 
And we really sat with the energy and I did not really know how to handle it except for to not engage with him because I didn't want to feed into the energy because that's what I would have done in the past. I would have really fed into the energy. And so I advised the girls to block the number. Sophia. I was angry. You were angry. And I honor that and witness that for you, you know, holding that space. However, we were able to collectively co-create a massive shift Mm -hmm. because he did shift quite rapidly and really surrender to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were like, okay, this is cool. Um, We were going to move forward with this and like shed – Shed the trauma, right? And not like feed into it. We used to, I really, we used to kind of roll in that energy, you know, Mm -hmm. whether I would like call my mom and tell grandma and like, I wanted to prove my rightness and feel really right about what I was doing. And that just didn't matter anymore. Yeah. And so we allowed that to fizzle. And then Nadia started homeschooling. And so here we are, Nadia's homeschooling. You'd gone back, right? At that point, fifth, her fifth grade. So my eighth. Yeah, you. Yeah, I was in school in eighth grade. Sophia was back in school. Mm -hmm. James could be. James was still in traditional school. Mm -hmm. So now, um, so I want to ask you, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your feeling from the shift from when I was married to your dad to. Well, let's just say now. I mean, night and day. It's not even comparable. Like, it was a really... I mean, it's like two different people. Honestly, from dad, too, though. Mm -hmm. Like, you were a different person and dad was a different person to a different degree. Yeah. You both have changed as people. You've obviously grown more, but, I mean, he's grown, too. Yeah. Like, I... It's like two separate pieces of my life. Like, I don't really. Mm-hmm. So really, um, there were two timelines that we could have chosen. Yeah. One would have been the resistance and the pushing against. Mm-hmm. And the other one was this really full acceptance of what we were moving through and doing it together and really yeah. bouncing off of and supporting each other. It's like, mom, I wasn't the like, I didn't want to be the ruler of the roost. Like, I really wanted and still seek to see my children as human beings who chose me, but we're each other's guides. You know, each of us has our own strengths and we lean into those strengths. And when someone is off the other, somebody is here to swoop in and say, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Everything's all good. Let's refocus. And that's a really beautiful dynamic that we've fostered between us. And we have a pretty wide range of ages here. She's almost 17. 12 and then James is nine and I'm 42 (laughs) and we're all just bumping against each other here enjoying the evolution okay we have a question here was this one of the first applications of the concept that a problem can't be solved with the same energy from which it was created nailed it nailed it I do say that often and you all have heard me say that haven't you Mm -hmm. Right. Like we can't keep we can't ride the same frequency that the bullshit came in on. Yeah. You've got to shift it. You have to shift it. And so now I want to now let's fast forward for the sake of time. I can't believe it's already 1140. And talk about. Sophia. Mm -hmm. She just graduated from her online schooling program. Mm -hmm. And she had gone back to traditional school. So off, off yeah, off and on. She was <laughs> just kind of dabbling here and there, but always a straight A student. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it matters. <laughs> but when she decided to start homeschooling again, I, I want to I want you to see the contrast in dad's reaction oh, because yeah. of our evolution, right? Because we're the only one in the room. It's all a reflection of us. So Sophia had a bit of a breakthrough. Not a breakdown. We'll call it a breakthrough. Uh, 
when was that last Both year? Both my freshman year and my sophomore year. Okay. I didn't go to a full year of in person high school ever. Yeah. Okay. So the long and short of that is Sophia said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, oh, I got to do this again. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, so I had that, like, I wanted to constrict. I was like, oh, I don't want to have this conversation with dad again. I didn't say that, but I was like, I felt it in my body. Yeah. Right. And I was like, ooh, shift the feeling. That's the first thing I did was I was like, what I say, what I do. Do you remember what I did? Mm -hmm. You don't remember what I did. I went in the bathroom and I took a cold. Shower? I took a cold shower. You don't remember this? No, dude, you're you, tapping. You, you, to like you told me, and I was like, I'll be back. Give me 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm taking a cold shower. That's funny. No, I, I don't remember that. I knew that if I could shift the feeling in, my, in my nervous system, that the response yeah. would shift, right? Because I'm experiencing in my external world what my body is experiencing inside. Mm -hmm. So I took a cold shower. I, I, tapped. I breathed. I mean, yeah. they might've thought I was dying in there. <laughs> it was all beautiful and profound. And I did, I told you didn't, I was like, Nadia, hmm. I think I went into Nadia's room and I was like, breathe with me, <laughs> please <laughs> breathe with me. Sophia wants to homeschool again. And so I, the next day I had the conversation and do you know what his response was? Can you just be like, okay. I said, okay. I'm not going to argue with you. He basically was like, it is what it is. Yeah. It was like he waved his white flag. <laughs> he was like, I don't want, he said, I don't want Sophia to not like me. I want to have a relationship with her. And so I'm not going to fight anyone on this. I'm just going to go with it. So cool. And then he said, and if Nadia keeps homeschooling too, whatever. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, you're like, what? Okay. And then I was like, oh, breathe, just breathe and tap, let it in, let it in. And we let it in. Mm -hmm. And so Nadia is still homeschooling, toying with the idea of going back next year for eighth grade. And Sophia just graduated mm -hmm. with her um, diploma from Acellus Online Learning. And it's a great program if anyone is exploring that. Okay. So this has been the kind of massive evolution that we've experienced. Now, I'm going to jump to a specific experience that I believe will serve in some way to help you in supporting your children. What the, what the other kids have told me, meaning Nadia and James, when they go to their dads, when Sophia is present, they sleep better because she anchors the energy. Because mm -hmm. truly, it... <laughs> It, I love their dad. He's a great person and their stepmom. They're both good people. Their energy is kind of all over the place at times. They're not grounded, right? Mm -hmm. They're reaching outside. And now I'm going to stop because I don't want to judge their experience. When she now, she now visits a little bit more mm -hmm. because the energy is a little more stable than it used to be over there. And Nadia and James have both told me I sleep better when she's there. Well, the last visit to dad's on a Saturday night, Sophia wasn't there. And I believe that Nadia was really feeling the oh. difference in energy that night. And mm -hmm. Sophia had just had a massive healing session, which she's such a powerful little being. It rippled through like <laughs> waves through the entire family. <laughs> Nadia called me. You're okay with me sharing this still, yeah. right? Okay. Sophia was not there. Nadia was anxious. She had a hockey game the next morning and she could not fall asleep. And she called me about 1.30 a.m. I'm so glad I had my phone turned up. And she was, you were crying, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how you were feeling at that time? Um, Very anxious. and Seems to be a theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just. What'd I you feel in your body? You didn't want to stay still, right? Yeah. What did yeah. you tell me? Mom? I, I felt like I could run a marathon is what I said. <laughs> she said, I feel like I could run a marathon. Like I was like, why am I not tired? Because then I was anxious because I have to wake up early. Right, you want I had to, to wake get up early sleep. the next day. And then I had to play a whole hockey game. It's not like I could just. How was your heartbeat? Do you remember? Was your heart racing at all? I don't know. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> then it probably wasn't racing. You maybe would have noticed. Okay. So yeah. you couldn't sit still. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were very restless. 
you felt anxious and what was going on in your mind? Um, was there everything. a lot going on yes. in your mind? Cause yes. you said to me, it's cause I couldn't silent my mind. And like, I just kept thinking and thinking, even though I wasn't thinking about anything. I was You're like, thinking. I can't quiet my mind, mom. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm no guru. I was sitting with this, like, I was kind of like, oh shit, what do I do? <laughs> and, you know, immediately I just went to, well, what would you do for anyone? You would be present with them. And so I witnessed how she was feeling. I, you know, was just sending her massive amounts of love. And then what came through was like, you know, let's take her through a process that you would do for a client, right? And, but it's a different dynamic between you and your child. And so I told her, I said, let's focus on our breath. And so we started breathing together, I was just walking her through some nice deep breaths and doing the same process that you've heard me do. If you've been tuning in for a little while, you know, calling light into the space in our body where you feel that resistance. And how did that feel for you, Nadia? Much the breath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's be a little more specific <laughs> if you don't mind. How did, what does better mean? Um... How'd your body start to feel? <laughs> Way more relaxed and calming down. Okay. How about your mind? Relaxed. <laughs> okay. And now do you, part of this process that you're witnessing here right now is we get to teach our kids how to describe how they're feeling because in so many households, it is very foreign and it feels kind of awkward, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Especially... Yeah you know, on a podcast, like, how do you expect me to, to describe how I'm feeling? Like it really is an art that we get to help our children craft for themselves because so many of us are so disconnected from our bodies that we really don't even know, like, how do I describe how I was feeling? Mm -hmm. Right. So during the process, Nadia, I asked you specifically, where are you feeling this in your body? Do you remember that? Do you yes. remember where you were feeling it in your body? Where did I say? I don't – I'm asking you because I honestly <laughs> don't remember. I think I just said every, everywhere. Everywhere? <laughs> yeah. You felt it all over, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And when I suggested to you that you start calling in the light, right, inviting in the light, what happened for you? Did you have a feeling? Did you see anything? What happened? I just – Set the intention? Yeah. Okay. And that's okay. And I say that because we can overcomplicate this, the simplicity of the process. Mm -hmm. And when you do invite light, when you're inviting the light of creator, right? Pure unconditional love into your body, you don't have to see, feel, or hear anything. Now I guarantee you, if you do it more often, you will become attuned to it and you will see the energy shift. And Nadia does have the ability to see energy shift and with her eyes closed because you've described it to me before, mm -hmm. but it's all about intention. If you're setting the intention, even though you're not having a physical experience, it's happening for you and your physical body innately knows what to do with that. And it will create a shift. Did it shift for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it continued to shift, right? Tell me, as we focused our attention on our body and just being present, did you feel it continue to shift? Yeah. Yes. And then we tapped, right? What was that like for you? Much better. <laughs> <laughs> just much better. Okay. <laughs> so uh, as you were tapping on yeah. the specific places, right? Mm -hmm. So we started here on the inside of the eye. Did you feel any actual shift in energy or was it just about intention for you? It's just about attention. It was just about intention, right? Mm -hmm. Did you feel your body soften as you were tapping? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you, your mind slowed, yes. right? And then, um, were you able to go to sleep? Yes. Last night she came into my room too. Okay. Middle of the night. I woke up and she was next to me. She's like, <laughs> I couldn't sleep. Okay. I was like, oh. Okay. 
And so then you were able to fall asleep next to Sophia. Yes. Okay. So the power of presence, right? I mean, you sleep in your bed most of the time, all the time, because you, you like your space. <laughs> but for whatever reason, you wanted to be next to Sophia. And that was all perfect. And mm -hmm. so you wanted Sophia's presence. So the simple power of presence and boom, you were able to go to sleep. I love it. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Is there anything that you want to share, um, Sophia? No. No? Okay. Uh -huh. Nadia, anything else you want to share about your I don't experience? Think so. No? Okay. So now would will you tap on your own now that you know the power of that? Mm -hmm. Have you because I've introduced you to tapping before in the past, but have you ever used it on your own? Mm -mm. No? Okay. What about you, Sophia? No? no. It, it's a yes or no question. <laughs> okay. So no. Okay. So, Maybe. but you know who does use it? James. Really? The, yeah. I'm not surprised. The, the Pisces. That's so funny. James is nine and he gets test anxiety and he goes to traditional school mm -hmm. and um, there's a tapping point on the pinky side of your hand that he will use where you, it's kind of discreet, you know, I mean, you can tap on right, your face, but you know, in the world we're living where yeah. our kids are taught to judge each other um, and they do it often, yeah. he will just tap on the side of his hand. And he tells me that it really does help to shift his energy. And he's a very watery guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very emotional. And so what a great way to empower your children to just, we talk about the breath, you know, take a deep breath, soften, open up and do a little bit of tapping. Yeah. I'm always telling everyone and myself, just take a deep breath breathe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, is there anything else that you all want to share? Good. Y'all feel like this has been a complete experience for you? Yes. Okay. I think that I covered everything that we have on our list. I did make a list. Um, let's look at the comments here. Uh, someone is congratulating you. Congrats, Sophia. Way to go Thanks. on graduating. <laughs> And then we have another comment that is so important, enabling our children to describe their emotions. Absolutely. And it is a practice, right? The more that we do it, the easier it is for us to access that information and share it. Mm -hmm. And Mark says, thank you so much for doing this. The energy and love between you is beautiful and inspiring. Thank you so much. Okay. So now we get to look at Nadia's frequency in water. Ooh. So... And Sophia, had I known you were going to dip in, I would have done yours too. But we'll have you on another podcast if you're open to that. Okay. <laughs> so you all know, if you've been hanging for a little while, that when I have a guest on, I will take a Petri dish of water and I will do a healing session that they have to offer or a meditation or dip into their content and set the intention. It's all about intention that the frequency of their work flow through me into the water as an expression to present to them as a gift. And so for not with Nadia, it was a little bit different. She doesn't have any guided meditations yet, yet. <laughs> right. Um, so what I did for her is she stayed at her dad's last night. I took the, and this is pretty clever on my part. I'm just going to pat myself on the back. Pretty creative. I took the Petri dish. Gonna You're going to be really inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I took the Petri dish filled it with a little bit of water and held it in my hand close to my heart and, and literally just simply spoke the intention uh, mm -hmm. into the water. And then I sat it on her pillow. Mm. I sat it on her pillow all night long. And then this morning I got up, I brought the Petri dish into my room with me and I meditated just in the silence, just breathing, being present with myself and the beautiful Petri dish. And I wrapped my heart energy around it and just sat in gratitude for Nadia. I just thought of Nadia. I pictured her as, you know, throughout her life, holding her as a baby, as a newborn, and then seeing her dancing on stage and seeing her riding her horse and just being really present with the spirit, the energy, the essence of Nadia as I held this Petri dish. And then as I was holding it again, close to my heart, I pulled out my phone and I searched her picture 
in my <laughs> phone and pulled up all of these pictures. And I was just going through memories, just witnessing mm -hmm. Nadia, looking at like kind of reminiscing about her. And that is how I set the intention to infuse her frequency into the water. So here we go, everyone. Uh, zoom in. Nadia, look. Hmm. I'm going to zoom in here. And now you can see, look at the structure around. See how the water is coming together, structuring, forming. And I have another picture I want to show you. Now, I can't zoom in on this anymore. But the picture that I have... You that little spot, there's I hope you can see my arrow. Perhaps you can. There's a little face right there. And it's Nadia. <laughs> and I also see right here there are these two energies like coming together. What do you think, Nadia, about your frequency in water as experienced through me? Do you have anything to say about it? It's pretty beautiful. It's pretty yeah. beautiful. Okay, hold on. I have <laughs> another I have another picture. Okay, now you can it's a little blurry because I couldn't hold my hand still. But this is just a <laughs> little bit of a different perspective. Up here, I'm seeing right here like I'm so I'm getting angel vibes here. Do you see these kind of on the yeah. left side, these kind of left they left these wings? Like wing mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have this. Nadia, do you want to go grab it out of the freezer sure. and see it live and see? Just tell us how you feel looking at it. Oh, she's running. See, look. Now look at that. That. Do you see that? Um, oh, you know what it reminds me of? Hmm. What's that thing in Harry Potter? The little flying Which, thing? Oh, yes. What's it called? Snitch, I think, or something. Oh, yeah, oh, snitch. oh, it's called a snitch. That's ironic. Now look at, Nadia look at, always be calling people snitches. Now look at that. Do you see, look at that. Do you do. see the, from it now, this is a different perspective on that. That's really uh -huh. pretty. Okay. So Nadia. Okay. Let's, we're going to stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh. And now, Mom? Mom? oh, well, they can see us. I didn't mean, my bad. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> my bad. Okay. Look now. Look at that. What do you think? Oh yeah. You can hold here. You can hold it. Hold it up to the light. Tell us what you think about your frequency in water, <laughs> Nadia. She's gonna say it's better. Water has a consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see it. <laughs> She's a, okay. A Mark point. says if you flip it upside down, it reminds me of the tree of life. Oh, I Ooh. love that. I feel like it's a bunch of branches. Validating the energy and frequencies that is Nadia. Hey, See the tree. Now, before we go, I would like to let everyone know that, okay, so first of all, thank you so much, everyone, for being present with us. This was beautiful and epic. We will have Sophia on as a guest um, individually, well, maybe with Nadia um, sometime soon. Hold it close to the camera. I can't even <laughs> <can't, can't> really <laughs> And then here, do it again. Oh. No, that's you can't not really see it. That made it's it worse. Not, it does make yeah. it worse. Yeah. Um, here. Oh my God. <laughs> you look, like you can. No. <laughs> yeah, look. It's like, it's like you can see like this, like almost wing. Whoa. Oh. It looks cool from like our perspective. Yeah. Put okay. You like can that. hold it. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Water Wisdom. I'll have James on sometime too. He's a hoot. <laughs> he is a funny one. He is a funny one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Signing off. Is there anything you'd like to say? Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like to learn more about how I support all of my mission work, Kong and Water, please check the description.